Hey everyone, Mr. Kaczynski here, working on quadratic equations in IXL's Algebra 1 skills. Today we're going to deal with transformations of quadratic functions. Um, in one of my earlier videos on quadratic equations, we talked about general form of a quadratic equation. This is what's called vertex form of a quadratic equation. All right, so let's talk about what all these values mean, okay? Um, first of all, that H value right there is the horizontal translation. It's basically how far the object has, or the parabola has been slid left and right. That's a horizontal translation, okay? Um, this K value right here is the vertical translation. It's how far the parabola, Y equals X squared, has been translated, slid up or down. And this A value here, which actually doesn't show up too much in this IXL skill, barely at all when I went through it, uh, it's the vertical stretch. Okay, so it's not like a proportion where it's made bigger both horizontally and vertically. It's a vertical stretch in that it's just stretched up and down, okay? Or if it's a negative value, if that's a negative A value, it means that the parabola has been reflected over the x-axis. So we're gonna start with verbal descriptions and then we'll get into um, words a little bit too. Oh yeah, one last thing. Why is it called vertex form? Because the vertex of this parabola, the place where it stops getting bigger and starts getting smaller, is found at, is easily located in this equation. It's H, K. So that's the vertex of that equation. That's why this is called vertex form. All right, so here we go. We're going to do a translation five units up of this function right here, f of x equals x squared. That's called the parent function uh, for quadratic equations. It's big papa. It's the one that um, we're dealing with every time, and then we're talking about how has it been translated, how has it been vertically uh, stretched, how has it been reflected, things like that. So this time we're doing a translation five units up. A translation five units up. So here's vertex form. A translation five units up, that's K controls the vertical translations. So here we go. We're going to go G of X because we're doing G of X. There is no vertical stretch, so we don't have to worry about A. There is no horizontal translation, so we don't have to worry about H. So we're just going to do X squared and 5 units up plus 5. That's it. G of X equals X squared plus 5. All right. Um, what if we do a translation of 8 units down? Well, 8 units down is controlled by H. That's the Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's not. Up and down is still controlled by K. Okay, so we're going to affect that value right there. All right, so this time we'll do G of X. Again, there's no vertical trans or vertical stretching. There's no horizontal translation. So there's no A and K values to think about. Or A is 1. It's vertical stretch factor is 1 and H is 0 as in it hasn't been translated right or left at all. And 8 units down is just going to be minus 8. So g of x equals x squared minus 8. And that would be our new function. If you graph these on a graphing calculator next to y equals x squared, you'll see how this one is 5 units higher and this one's 8 units um, below. And we'll get to a couple graphs as well. All right, next up, we're going to do a translation 3 units right. Right and left translations are controlled by that value right there, that h value. So this is going to be g of x equals, there is no a value, there's no vertical stretching, or it's 1, um, we're going to do x minus 3 squared. And there is no k value because we're not going up or down at all. So see the difference is that when you're going right and left, the value appears inside the parentheses. When you're going up and down, that value appears outside the parentheses. Next up, we're going to do a translation seven units left of the parent function. Seven units left. Again, right and left translations are controlled by that h value right there. All right, so g of x. IXL puts the g of x in there for you, by the way. Um, there is no vertical stretch, so we don't have to worry about a. We're going to do x minus seven units left. That's negative seven. 
squared, don't forget the squared sign, and there is no k value, so you're not going up or down. Now this can be simplified a little bit, so we will. So whenever you're going uh, left, you could just put x plus seven. I know that's counterintuitive. You would think left is negative, what it is, but the equation already has the subtraction. So you're subtracting a negative, which is like adding seven. All right, so that is our new function after f of x has been tr uh, translated seven units left, it would now be that. Some more verbal um, descriptions here. Now we're doing a reflection across the x-axis. A reflection across the x-axis. That's affected by this a value right here. All right. So we're going to go g of x equals negative x squared. And that's it. That Just putting that negative sign in front of the x squared will flip the parabola over the x-axis. Again, if you try it in Desmos.com or your graphing calculator, um, you'll see what I mean if you just type in negative x squared. Down here, we're doing a translation three units left and six units up. Three units left you know what, let's do two different colors. We'll do three units left and six units up. The left and right is controlled by H and the up and down is controlled by K. So here's our function. G of X, there is no A value, we're not doing any vertical stretch or reflection here, equals X minus negative three x minus negative 3, which is really plus 3, S squared, and then since it's 6 units up, plus 6. So that would be our function after a translation 3 units left and 6 units up. Plus 6 for the plus 6 units up, uh, plus 3 because it's really minus negative 3 for the 3 units left. All right, let's take a look at a graph. Um, really, there's two things we have to notice. One, this vertex. The vertex is at negative four, uh, negative three. Okay, the other thing is the vertical stretch, which I told you IXL doesn't really do too much, but I can see this one-to-one -one ratio there, right there. One squared, when you go one to the right, one squared is one, and that's why that is there. If, if it went up two, it would have a vertical stretch of two. Um, or one times one is one. Maybe that's a better way. All right, so if we saw that point right there, then our A value would be two, but it's not. All right, so here's going to be our function. Um, we're going to go, and we're doing G of X again. So we'll do G of X equals, there's no vertical stretch. So we're gonna, and it's four units left. So we're going to do X plus four, minus negative four is plus four, squared, uh, minus three, because it's been translated down three units. And that would be our new function. So again, if you graph that on Desmos.com or your graphing calculator, you'll see that it, it's this one exactly, um, as opposed to y equals x squared, which would be this parabola right here. One more, um, this one, let's identify the vertex. It is at negative, or I'm sorry, it's actually at um, positive two, negative eight. Uh, as far as the vertical stretch goes, there is none, okay? So here's our function, g of x equals x minus 2 because it's um, two, a translation two units to the right. I know the minus is counterintuitive, but that's just something you got to get used to. And then we'll do um, minus 8 for the translation eight units down. And that is our new function. All right, so this is an introduction to 
um, transformations of quadratic functions, mainly uh, translations, but we did see one reflection in there. So, all right, good luck with that, and let me know how it goes in the comments.